Welcome to another segment of You Have Got to Eat at This Place. We are on location at the Brick House Grill here in LaGrange, Georgia. Let's go inside and see what's cooking at the Brick House Grill. We're inside this great kitchen here at the Brick House and we're here with Chef Richard Lindemood. Richard, how are you doing today, man? I'm great. How are you? We're doing great, man. Good. So what are you going to be cooking for us today? You're going to be cooking three items. Yeah. Um, so this is the first item he's going to cook. And we invite you to, you have got to eat at this place. And I'm sure after we finish this segment, you would want to eat at this place, the Brick House. Go ahead, Richard. Take it away. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, our seared ahi tuna salad. And I've got a, a nice piece of tuna that I'm going to sear in some olive oil and that's stretched with uh, blackened Cajun seasoning. And first I'm gonna make sure it's hot enough. All right. I got the pan heating. See, you got a little sizzle there, so that's that's good. Okay, so you need to so call the sizzle factor. Sizzle factor. Uh, the whole key to this dish is serving it rare, you know. Uh, a lot of people are weary of that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. the tuna is very healthy for you, high mm -hmm. omega-3 and we just want to get a nice crust on the outside. You never want to get this well done or medium well because all the moisture is gone and, and flavor and it's just not good. It's like eating canned tuna fish. Mm. So, <laughs> all right. so I just want to emphasize that. It okay. takes about, mm, about a minute on each side. Get it loose, get a nice crust. Um, then I'm going to be serving it on a spinach salad. Oh man, that sounds good. With mandarin oranges and red peppers and sesame dressing, wasabi sauce, and crisp fried wontons. Oh, that sounds good. Is this uh, something you created? Yeah. Okay. It's something we've had on the menu since we opened about four years ago. Now those spices and seasonings, are, is that a spice that you create yourself? Yes. Oh, it's man, a basic already. blackened seasoning, uh, paprika, cayenne pepper, oregano, Onion powder, garlic powder, salt, black pepper. That's about it. A couple of ingredients I can't tell you. <laughs> so a lot of people may wonder, when you hear that word sear, what does sear actually mean? It means you get something hot, whether it's a pan or a grill, you get it smoking hot, and then you put your meat on it. And it kind of sears. It, Sear. it, searing is sealing. It's sealing the juices in on a piece of meat or a fish or anything like that. So it's a it's a technique that's important uh, as far as keeping the moisture and flavor inside right. of it, not letting it escape out and drip out over the grill. So sear means flavor is inside. Yes. Sealing it in on the inside. All right, so this is done enough. I'm going to whip right. it over here. Nice piece of fish. And yes, I love tuna. <laughs> I've got my homemade sesame glaze that we use, and I've got the plate here, with the spinach, mandarin oh, oranges, and red peppers. <laughs> and mandarin orange gives a nice sweetness, you know, um, contrast. You gotta have a very sharp knife. Now what does the knife have slice. to be sharp? Because the tuna tends to want to kind of shred or bust up a little bit, a sharp knife is essential. Mm -hmm. uh, and it needs to be not like a serrated knife. A serrated knife that you cut bread with and shred it up. So Interesting. nice, and then you, you'll see why in just a second. So it, it cuts it yeah, without beautiful. shredding it. My hands are clean, that's why I'm not wearing a glove. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we slice it up like that. Mm -hmm. And we do a nice presentation. Nick, can you give me some Asian slaw? My buddy Nick. Asian slaw. So we just put it around like this. This is a very popular item. Um, I was pleasantly surprised to see that the people of LaGrange will eat raw or rare fish. Man, that, uh, that looks Asian big time. Slaw. Okay, there it is. <laughs> All right. So this is Asian slaw. It's got cabbage and vegetables and sesame and all kind of Asian flavors and ginger. And this goes right up on top right there like that. Mm. All right. Now, the same glaze is kind of the dressing for it, too. I'm going to put it on there. And then also, we have our own. We make all of our sauces and everything in-house. This is wasabi sauce. It gives a nice little kick. Oh, wasabi it's sauce. Pretty green color. You drizzle that around. 
top it off with, uh, I had some wontons. Wontons? That looks really good. Look that at that. Is, uh, brick house, seared ahi tuna salad on spinach with sesame dressing, wasabi sauce, and Asian straw. Man, that looks beautiful, Rich. We just saw Richard make that great salad. Now we're going to get some great beef. Tell us about your beef here, Richard. And what right. are you ready to do? Well, um, I've got a ribeye here. Oh, uh, ribeye. All, all our beef is USDA top two-thirds of choice certified Angus beef. That means it goes through a rigorous program mm -hmm. to make sure that it grades out the highest quality and that it, it it's moist and tender and, and it's the best steak that you can get. That's awesome, man. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people don't think of us. We're, we have a variety of foods, but we also specialize in steak. I had a butcher shop before, so I've been in the meat industry, and that's kind of one of my fortes. So you know good meat. <laughs> yes, sir. So what I'm going to do is cut off couple ribeyes here so you can see the good quality of it um, you know it's essential that the meat is is aged our meat is aged uh, 28 to 35 days okay. and what the aging does is it helps the muscle to break down and get more tender and develop its flavors the friendly bacteria is what does that breaks it down makes it tender and um, you'll see well, I never knew that. Beef needs to be I, aged. Yeah. This is a 14 ounce ribeye that we sell. And that's from the chuck in. That's why it looks that's beautiful. a little different. All that flavor right there. Mm -hmm. So, these grayed out top two thirds of choice. And this is, we cut small ones for our steak sandwich. Okay. So, when you get a steak sandwich, you're getting the same quality as the entree. Mm -hmm. You know, it's $21.95. So I'm gonna bring this over to the grill right. and get it going, and I'll see you over there. All right, we're back at the grill here at the Brick House with Richard with this beautiful, beautiful USDA <laughs> ribeye steak. Top this choice. Top choice. Age. Uh, this is where all the action happens. This is the grill. We are our call Brick House Grill after all. Brick House Grill. Uh, so I got a nice clean grill. It's hot. I season it with a little bacon fat just right. to make sure that nothing sticks. And we just take kosher salt black pepper and a little garlic season it liberally it's got a little bit of olive oil on it man that's beautiful to help sear we were talking about the searing before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. same principle get it ready get a nice hot spot a white spot's a hot spot white spot you know, your backyard grill what you want to do is if you're using charcoal you know you, you you let it burn down a little bit and get hot and turn white and get the same principle it sears in the flavors that's interesting we like to get a little diamond marks is what we call it by mm -hmm. cooking it one way for a little bit and then turning it and mm -hmm. then you get the grill marks that are, are diamond. It shows a little bit of expertise. All right. Uh, got a little water here in case it gets no, we don't want it too hot. All right. We don't want it to be char flame. But a lot of times people think, you know, if something's real dark and, and crusty that it's burnt. But it's not necessarily, you know, it's like good barbecue. That's the, right. That's the bark. That's mm -hmm. the good stuff. Mm -hmm. So getting grill flavor on there is a big part of it. Oh, look at so that steak. I'm gonna, so you can see the oil's coming up. I'm going to turn it that way. Turn it that way. So we oh, so get you nice crisscross it on each side. Mm -hmm. okay. Crisscross each side. That way, no matter what side that you serve with it, it's going to be, it's going to look good. Now, what's the secret? You, you basically just do everything by by how it looks or do you have like a, in, a, a timer inside of your uh, head? Uh, well, I do. I mean, you know, the, the less experienced cooks, they, they'll use a thermometer, um, which we have right here. Mm -hmm. And basically, if it's thick enough and you could insert the thermometer in it, mm -hmm. you know, basically you're going like 125 for rare all the way up to 160 for well. Right. So, you know, everybody would like to stay cooked differently. One thing that's good about the ribeye is it's got enough fat in it, so yes. if you cook it well done, uh -huh. it's still juicy, still juicy and good. And cooking well done doesn't mean burning the heck out of it. It Isn't just it? means getting it just well done. We'll flip it over. Beautiful. You got them diamond marks right there. <laughs> yeah. See that? 
That's perfection. That's my favorite cut of meat. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But like I was saying, it's, it's got a lot of flavor because the front of it connects to the shoulder. Okay. The shoulder is the is the chuck, which makes great hamburger mm. because it's it's a moving muscle. It's got more uh, tendons and connective muscles and stuff, so it, that gives it more flavor. Okay. You ever notice a tenderloin is the most tender cut right. on the animal? Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's tender, but it doesn't have much flavor, near as much flavor as a ribeye does. That's some great education about food yeah. I never thought about, man. <laughs> yeah. It's about I location. Throw some knowledge on you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that finish cooking, and we're going to cook up some vegetables and a, our twice-baked potato and put that together, and, and we're going to get Nick to make a pizza over here in a second, and we'll be right back. All right. All right. To go. To go with the steak, we have some fresh vegetables, and we're going to saute them in garlic butter. We've got some zucchini, yellow squash, mushroom, broccoli, spinach, red you like, onions. You like colors, don't you, Rich? Yes. <laughs> You know, people eat with their eyes first. Eat with their eyes first. Uh, it's got to look good. You know, it tastes good, I think. A little salt, pepper, and garlic. Salt it up. Again, it's the hot pan method. Hot pan. Searing, searing that flavor. We, when we saute stuff, we call it, we chefs call it caramelization. That's when the sugars and the vegetables start to cook with the fat, the butter, the oil, whatever you're using, it starts to turn colors and coat itself with, with like a caramelization, which is flavor. Caramelization. Caramelization is flavor. It sounds and tastes good. <laughs> yes. You got that potato ready? <laughs> I'm going to melt the cheese on that. And then All right. I'm going to grab a plate. You just do it right here. All right. Still meet them there. All right. Okay. So these vegetables don't take long to cook. Right. So in and out. But I'm, I'm definitely told we don't need to overcook our vegetables. Yeah, you know that's something that we're uh, we do in the south. <laughs> yeah. A lot is cut the heck out of them. <laughs> I've gotten to where I have to be more health conscious. So you know, I'm eating a lot more fresh vegetables and fruit. Mm -hmm. And. Um, the least it's done, the more vitamins is in it. The, right. The raw raw vegetables you get the 100% uh, nutritional value. The more you cook it, the less you get. All right. So that's the vegetables. There's our beautiful ribeye. That looks good. And we got a twice baked potato coming through the oven right here. Twice baked potato. Uh, that's the pizza oven. And that's our steak. Wow. Voila. Voila. <laughs> Good steak doesn't need anything added to it. People put sauce on it because they're trying to cover up something. <laughs> it's all right to eat it with it's sauce. It's all right to do it. But, but it won't put any sauce on your steak. Yeah, this is it. Okay, Nick is making one of our soon-to-be famous pizzas. We use fresh dough. We hand toss it. We call it Neapolitan style, which means it's kind of New York style. It's a, it's a, it's a yeast dough that rises. Beat it back down, roll it out, and toss it by hand. The hand tossing really is what gives the, the crust a little chew and a little, you know, crispiness, and it just makes it real good. That's the beginning of a good pizza, right there. All right. The <laughs> fire in the background. <laughs> All right, so Nick, toss it up. That's the way it's done. Wow. But it takes See, a little time. The centrifugal motion of it that pushes the inside to the outside, and that's why you have a crust on the outside. Okay. Most people fake it. <laughs> <laughs> we do it for real. So this is a 16-inch pizza. We have a variety of pizzas. All the ingredients are fresh and top quality. Uh, we make our marinara sauce from scratch with San Marzano, tomatoes, and garlic, and oregano, and basil, and. Um, we use a really good, high-quality Saputa Gold mozzarella cheese. Uh, the, the, the cheese is uh, uh, low-moisture mozzarella. So it's, just, it's real rich. It's got a high fat content. Okay. And, um, so the crust, the sauce, and the cheese is really what makes it. Anything else is just extra. We have a carnivore where we put five different kinds of meat. 
beef, bacon, Italian sausage, pepperoni, shredded chicken. Mm -hmm. um, we're about to come out with a new menu next month and we're going to have some new items on there. We do like a Chipotle barbecue chicken pizza and uh, a classic margarita which has a fresh vine ripe tomatoes mm -hmm. which I get from the farmer's market which are excellent. Right. And fresh basil and cheese. And Sound good. So we're man. really proud of our pizzas. We're not considered a pizza place but we've been told we have the best pizza around. So well, awesome. You'll you'll get to try it in a second. All right, so thin layer of sauce, not too much. Of course, I come from an Italian family, so you know, <laughs> I kind of grew up with the sauce. Sauce. <laughs> the secrets in the sauce. All right. All right. So we got our, our mozzarella on there. That's your own personalized sauce as well? Yes. Okay. I pretty much come up with me and Lance, the owner, come up with all the all the recipes and you know a lot of it's from years of experience. experience right. The thing that ma makes us different, I think, here at the Brick House is you know we, we get the best ingredients, mm -hmm. we get the best health, and we're consistent with it day in and day out. You know we put we put good product on the plate, we get good comments, we listen to our customers, we know we know our clientele, and we, we, we found out what they like, and mm -hmm. that's what we give them. That's the trick. That's good. We find out what, what they like. Want, uh -huh. and, and so make it make it good, too. And so, we're doing, uh, what are we doing? Carnivore. Yeah. Carnivore. Carnivore. Put some more chicken on there. <laughs> <laughs> Carnivore is the meat pizza. All right, great. So we have fresh Italian sausage. Some of that Angus beef, all our hamburgers. I want to say too, our hamburgers are excellent. Mm -hmm. They're eight ounce hand patty, chicken mm -hmm. fried Angus beef chuck. Mm -hmm. We season them like the steaks, mm -hmm. put them on the grill, have them a variety of different ways. So we got beef, we got sausage, chicken, pepperoni, bacon, and then we'll put another layer of cheese. That is See, we don't cheese. Beautiful. We got trees on the bottom and cheese on cheese the top. Cheese on the top. <laughs> cheese all the way around. Yeah. Don't forget Makes the it cheese. Good. Makes it good. All right. So we put it in our pizza oven and it'll be ready in about seven minutes. All right. Welcome back. And you have got to eat at this place. Look at this spread that Richard, say your last name again, Richard. Linda Mood. Linda Mood. He got us in the mood to eat some yes, great food. Uh, Richard, man, the color, the presentation um, is just awesome. And, and this is one of my favorite parts of the show. Um, is, is there anything in particular that you would like for me to try first? This. This, okay, all right. So right here, we have this loaded baked potato. Now you said twice. Twice baked potato. Twice baked potato. So we right. bake it, we pull the, the, the meat out and mix it with butter and sour cream and bacon and cheddar cheese and scallions. And scallions. And bake it off again. So you don't have to mix all that stuff together like with a baked potato. It's okay. Ready. All right. I'm going to, oh, look at that. Look at that cut, man. <laughs> this is, you can actually use a butter knife to cut this. <laughs> you do not need this right here to cut all it. All that marbling and, and aging. Aging. Okay. Wow. Uh, okay. Perfection. Here goes, here goes, here goes. Mm. <laughs> so you don't have to go further than downtown to get a great steak. You really don't. <laughs> this is something that tastes like it's in a metropolitan city. But we're right here in the Grange at the Brick House. All the flavor, the ribeye, and the aging, and the Angus beef, that's wonderful, man. 
This is a great steak. It's exactly like I like my steak cooked. So I'm gonna go over here and right. try some of these vegetables here. All right. These pan-seared yep. vegetables. <laughs> broccoli, one of my favorites. Eat your broccoli. <laughs> it's good for you. Mm. All the vegetables are good mushrooms, for Mushrooms, I love mushrooms. Yeah. Mushrooms always go good with steak. Mm. Mm. Somebody's gonna have to talk. I was always told not to <laughs> talk with your mouth full. Richard, yeah. this is great, man. It's great. Let's see this twice baked baked potato. Mm -hmm. Look at me using the wrong knife. I use the wrong knife to cut the steak. But like I said, you can get the steak <laughs> with the butter knife. Yeah. Little baked potato, nothing like a. Oh my God. It's so good you can eat the eat eat the shell on the outside. <laughs> Which my mom told me a long time ago, yeah. that gives you a lot of protein as well. Yep. Great, great, great. We rub them down with some bacon fat and kosher mm -hmm. salt, mm -hmm. so the, the skin is, is okay. good to eat too. Okay. <laughs> this food is great. I'm really not lying to you guys. This food is really great. And you have definitely got to eat at this place, the Brick House here in LaGrange. So now we'll, we'll set that to the side. Yeah. And um, I'll really get into that off camera, Nick and I. We'll finish mm -hmm. that. And once again, what do you call seared this salad? Tuna, uh, seared ahi tuna salad. Seared ahi tuna salad. Some blackened spice, seared rare, on a bed of spinach with mandarin oranges and roasted peppers, Asian slaw, yes. sesame dressing, and wasabi sauce. And you have the four basic colors here. <laughs> I, see, I see a little blue in there. We got the red, yeah. the orange, the yellow, the peppers. Okay, here it goes. People eat with their eyes first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Silence. That's a good thing. That bike took me. <laughs> Sometimes. That bike took me to Aruba, and I uh, was on the ocean, and I saw the waves coming in, and I'm actually laying on my hammock, and I'm actually eating your food. That awesome. took me to Aruba. <laughs> a awesome. great place. Let's go to Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> and. The last thing that we're going to try here, um, and what did you call this here? This is a carnivore pizza. The carnivore so. pizza. So this is for people who really like to... Um, like the meat. Like the meat. Yeah, like the, we can uh, do vegetarian too. Okay, well vegetarians, you, you can get a very <laughs> vegetarian here, but if you want. I have enough vegetables here already, so I'll do the carnivore, and I'll try this. Hand-tossed Neapolitan style. Marinara sauce made from the San Marizano tomatoes from Italy. So sweet. Now that bike right there took me to Italy. Even though I've never been to Italy. And so I'm eating this pizza and we're going down one of those mm -hmm. alleys on one of those boats. My wife and I and the guys Gone in the back, back. He's, he's, he's paddling it. And <laughs> yeah. we're eating this pizza. Richard, how long have you been cooking, man? How long have you been a chef? Uh, well, I'm afraid to say. Mm -hmm. About 35 years. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen. I know I don't look that old. No, you don't. <laughs> if you want to taste 35 years of great experience of cooking food and loving to cook food, the Brick House Grill here in the Grange, Georgia, you have got to eat at this place. I'm not kidding you. You have got to eat at the Brick House Grill in the Grange. That concludes our segment. Richard, we thank you so much, ma'am. My pleasure. Um, it's a joy to come in and, and eat your food, man. Like I said, a lot of love goes into it. And I appreciate you allowing appreciate us to come in and share it, man. Thanks for we coming in. wish you guys in. much more success. Thank you. All right. Y'all come and see us.